When I was out lost in sin, there was an issue that I was so familiar with. It was very prevalent all through school. It was just something everyone was aware of. There was just this constant competition for um, many different ways um, for attention and the jealousy, the rivalry, the envy, all of the things that came about from that were, it was constant. And when I started going into the nightclubs and living in that scene, it was incredible to watch all the energy and money put into the competition that would go on for appearance reasons only. But even on a greater scale, the nightclubs, what they were willing to do to be competitive, it's just crazy what that would result in. What no one prepared me for was how prevalent and how destructive this same spirit is in the ministry. I was not expecting it to be as venomous, as prevalent. Jealousy in the ministry, in life in general, but especially in the ministry is, in, is a really difficult thing to manage. And I know quite a few that have actually left ministry over the damage done, the destruction that has been done by others over just the competition and the, the needing to be bigger than and just not wanting to compete with someone the way people are so destructive. Many people have just left being kingdom builders because they, they just can't take the battle. Jealousy is mentioned in three different contexts in the Bible. Twice it's seen as a positive emotion and once as a negative. The jealousy of God for the hearts of his people is one of the positive ways. In several um, places in the Old Testament, God declares, I, the Lord, your God, am a jealous God. And this simply means in Hebrew, the word Q-A-N-N-A, -N -N which means simply jealous, but this word is only ever used in reference to God. Is it appropriate for God to be jealous? God chose the Israelites because of nothing they had done. They were not particularly noble. They did not voluntarily worship him to any degree. He blessed them. He multiplied them. He rescued them. He gave them amazing land with fields and cities that they did not cultivate or build. In turn, they agreed to worship, obey, and serve him. They were agreeing to take on the identity of being God's people, but instead they served idols. God invested a lot into the Israelites for them, and they agreed to worship him. They owed him their hearts. It was appropriate for him to expect that and he was jealous when they rejected him for other idols. So of course he has a right to be jealous. He had given them everything. Second, the jealousy of God's people for God to receive what he is owed is used by those who serve God and see others unjustly withholding the honor owed to God. And why should we be jealous for God's glory? We are so riled up when someone attacks our children's sports team, our political party. If we truly know the creator of the universe and understand what he has done for us, we should cringe at how unjust it is for others to refuse to worship him. But while this jealousy shows us the direction and intensity of our feelings, we still are called to be patient and gentle with others. The jealousy I'm going to address is the third kind that's brought up in the Bible. And this jealousy is to have what someone else has. And this is how we most often define the word jealousy. It is when we want something another possesses, whether that be a job, a car, a skill, a spouse, attention. The very first occurrence is found in Eden when the snake convinced Adam and Eve to be jealous of God's understanding of good and evil, that they really should be trying to get a his level of understanding of that and not settle for the little that they had. It also spread to Cain who killed Abel out of jealousy, Rachel and Leah also in Genesis all the way to Paul who dealt with false teachers who were jealous of his ministry. 
This is the type of jealousy that we refer to in when people have an overwhelming desire to keep what they already have, like the people with the Tower of Babel, they wished to stay together. They did not want to be separated. Joseph's brothers wanted to keep their position of prominence in the family, which is what caused them to act out. James 3, 14 to 16 says, But if you have bitter jealousy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast and be false to the truth. This is not the wisdom that comes down from above, but is earthly, unspiritual, and demonic. For where jealousy and selfish ambition exist, there will be disorder in every vile practice. Proverbs 14.30 says, A tranquil heart gives life to the flesh, but envy makes the bones rot. Philippians 2.3, Do nothing from rivalry or conceit, but in humility count others more significant than yourselves. Proverbs 27.4, Wrath is cruel, anger is overwhelming, but who can stand before jealousy? Galatians 5.19-21 says, Now the works of the flesh are evident. Sexual immorality, impurity, sensuality, idolatry, sorcery, enmity, strife, jealousy, fits of anger, rivalries, dissensions, divisions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and things like these. I warn you, as I warned you before, that those who do such things will not inherit the kingdom of God, meaning these are all barriers to entering heaven. You cannot keep these in your lifestyle. 1 Corinthians 3.3 3 says, For you are still of the flesh, for while there is jealousy and strife among you, are you not of the flesh and behaving only in a human way? 1 Corinthians 13.1-13 says, If I speak in tongues of men and of angels but have not love, I am a noisy gong or a clanging cymbal. And if I have prophetic powers and understand all the mysteries and all knowledge, and if I have faith so as to remove mountains but have not love, I am nothing. If I give away all I have and if I deliver up my body to be burned but not love, I gain nothing. Love is patient. Love is kind. Love does not envy or boast. It is not arrogant or rude. It does not insist on its own way. It is not irritable or resentful etc. Romans 13:13 13, 13 says, let us walk properly as in the daytime, not in orgies and drunkenness, not in sexual immorality and sensuality, not in quarreling or jealousy. Ecclesiastes 4:4. 4, 4, then I saw that all toil and all skill in work come from a man's envy of his neighbor. This is also vanity and a striving after the wind. It's bad to envy things that do not belong to us. When we fully focus on God, what we want is going to be his glory. And when we use the word jealous, we use it in a sense of being envious of someone who has something that we do not have. And this kind of jealousy is sin. It is not characteristic of a Christian or a follower of Jesus. Rather, it shows that we're still being controlled by our own desires. 1 Corinthians 3.3 3 and Galatians 5.26 both say, let us not become conceited, provoking, and envying of each other. Envy and jealousy are closely related. Oftentimes they're interchangeably used in modern translations, but they are not quite synonymous. Envy is a reaction to lacking something that another person possesses. Jealousy is a reaction to the fear or threat of losing something, often someone, we possess. Envy is the distress or resentment we feel when others have what we have not. Jealousy is a sense of dread or suspicion we feel when what we have might be taken away. Another word in the Bible that's closely associated with these two words is covetousness. And to covet is to have an excessive desire to possess what belongs to another usually related to tangible items like property. It's an intense craving or selfish desire that threatens the fundamental rights of others. The spiritual root issue behind envy and jealousy is fear. Fear of displacement due to the deception of coveting. Jealousy is present from Genesis to Revelation and it often plays a key role in all the many of the stories of drama and division through the Bible. Cain, the first murder committed was motivated by jealousy. In Genesis 4, 1 to 16, Cain's sacrifice to God was not acceptable where Abel's, his brother's was. 
And God clarified to Cain that he did not give his first and his best to God as we are asked to do and that his motives were not right. Rather than changing his attitude and giving his best to God, Cain embraced jealousy and then murdered his brother. Joseph's 10 older brothers are another story. Joseph or Jacob had 12 sons from four different women, but only two were from his favorite wife, Rachel. Jacob gave one of his sons, one of the two, Joseph, a very special coat, which began jealousy in his older sons. Joseph would go on to give a bad report of his brothers to Jacob and would also have prophetic dreams of his brothers bowing to him. Eventually, his brothers beat him and sold him into slavery, according to Genesis 37. King Saul. Much of 1 Samuel 15 to 31 recounts the interactions between King Saul and the future king, young David. Though Saul had been a good king at first, he began to disobey God and the Lord had the prophet Samuel anoint David to take his place. Saul became bitter over the love others had towards this shepherd boy and tried to kill him on several occasions. Saul's son, Jonathan, who should have been the one that was jealous of David, loved David. They were very close friends. A more thorough description of envy is a resentful, dissatisfied longing for another's possessions, position, fortune, achievements, or success. And the Bible says envy is an act of the flesh, the result of human sin. The acts of the flesh are obvious, sexual immorality, impurity, debauchery, idolatry, and witchcraft, hatred, discord, jealousy, fits of rage, selfish ambition, dissensions, factions, envy, drunkenness, orgies, and the like. I warn you, as I did before, that those who live like this will not inherit the kingdom of God. We saw that in Galatians 5, 19 to 21. The Bible paints a very vivid picture of envy's devastating effects. If left to grow in one's heart, the Bible says envy will lead to spiritual, emotional, and physical death. A heart at peace gives life to the body, but envy will rot the bones. And in the New Living Translation, it likens envy to cancer in the bones. The James 3, 14 to 16, there is, we read the stern warning about the sin of envy. But if you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, do not boast about it or deny the truth. For where you have envy and selfish ambition, you find disorder in every evil practice. Envy is an issue of the heart, and Jesus taught that purity and godliness come from within a person and not from external actions. Envy is one of the most inward vices or heart attitudes that defile a person. It is what comes from inside that defiles you, for from within a person's heart come evil thoughts, deceit, lustful desires, envy, slander, pride, and foolishness. All these vile things come from within. They are what defile you. Mark 7, 20 to 23. And here is the path of jealousy. One becomes fearful of losing what one has to another. Oftentimes it would be love or affection, a spouse, some kind of relationship. This arises from envy. It's an uneasiness that arises because of the fear that someone is going to rob something or someone that you love. What happens next is you become suspicious and you suspect things to happen that you have no proof of and quickly the person moves into your vain imaginations. You write all kinds of crazy stories about the possibilities of what could be going on in your mind. These thoughts can happen before we even realize what has occurred and this is why we have to learn to apply the Bible to our thoughts quickly because of how fast this can get going. 2 Corinthians 10.5 is critically important in our lives where it calls us to cast down vain imaginations and every high thing that exalts itself against the knowledge of God, bringing into captivity every thought to the disobedience of Christ, to the obedience of Christ. Romans 1.28-31, and even as they did not like to retain God in their knowledge, God gave them over to a debased mind to do those things which are not fitting, being filled with all unrighteousness, sexual immorality, wickedness, covetousness, maliciousness, full of envy, murder, strife, deceit, evil mindedness. They are whisperers, backbiters, haters of God, violent, proud, boasters, inventors of evil things, disobedient to parents, undiscerning, untrustworthy, unloving, unforgiving, and unmerciful. 
Mark 7, 20 to 23, he went on, from what comes out of a person is what defiles them, for it is from within that the evil thoughts come, sexual immorality, theft, murder, adultery, greed, malice, deceit, lewdness, envy, slander, arrogance, and folly, all of these evils defile a person. Hebrews 13, 5 through 6 says, Keep your lives free from the love of money and be content with whatever you have. Because God has said, Never will I leave you, never will I forsake you. So we say with confidence, The Lord is my helper, I will not be afraid. What can mere mortals do to me? I often hear that money is evil, or people refer to the Bible speaking of money as evil, but the Bible does not call money evil. It calls the love of money evil evil an open door comes into our lives when we look at others for acceptance that only god can give us so then we begin to suspect someone or something is trying to move in and take what we think god has given us all because we started to expect things from people depend on things from people and demand things from people that were only supposed to come from god and this all started when Lucifer desired to exalt himself above God before man was even on earth. Isaiah 14, 12 through 14 says, How art thou fallen from heaven, O Lucifer, son of the morning? How art thou cut down to the ground, which, which did weaken the nations? For thou hast said in thine heart, I will ascend into heaven. I will exalt my throne above the stars of God. I will sit also upon the mount of the congregation in the sides of the north. I will ascend above the heights of the clouds. I will be like the most high. Followed by, yet you will be brought down to hell to the sides of the pit. Lucifer was one of the top three, one of the archangels, later called Satan. He was driven and motivated to sin against the most high God. He was jealous of the honor that God received. He wanted to be like God, and he hates it when we worship God. He wants to stop worship any way that he can. Raven Cannon writes, Lucifer is an offended spirit. He was offended when God created man. We overcame by being quick to for we overcome by being quick to forgive and continue in that forgiveness until Jesus comes. We overcome by praying blessings on those who have offended us with a sincere and positive attitude for them to be blessed. Lucifer is a critical spirit. A critical spirit is a negative attitude of the heart that seeks to condemn, tear down, and destroy with words. We overcome by cultivating a positive attitude that strives to encourage, lift up, and elevate our words. Lucifer is a complaining spirit, a negative attitude that murmurs, grumbles, is contentious, grudging, arguing, and instigating. And we overcome by cultivating a positive attitude of thankfulness that produces within us the fruit of the Holy Spirit. Lucifer is a fault-finding spirit, a negative attitude that's looking for what's wrong with others, with things, with situations, always looking for and expecting the worst. We overcome by looking for the good in others, things, and situations. We don't deny problems, but rather than looking, we look for a positive solution rather than the problem, continuing to obsess on the problem. Lucifer is a stubborn spirit, a negative attitude that is not open to advice, suggestions, or other options. It is unteachable, an attitude that resists, fights against, and refuses any further change, transformation, maturity, or forward progress. We overcome by allowing ourselves to be flexible and bending and stretching, allowing someone else to get their way, allowing someone else to be right, and allowing ourselves to be okay with it. Lucifer is a grudge-holding and unforgiving spirit, a negative attitude that rears its head in our lives when we are hurt, wounded, or injured by others or the happenings of life and refuses to allow us to heal. Unforgiveness in our lives means that we are hurt by something or someone and we are refusing to get well. We overcome by forgiving everyone and everything that has hurt or wounded us in any way. When we forgive others, we're not letting them off the hook, but we are choosing to be healed ourselves. He wants us to live our whole lives trying to, he, the enemy wants us to self-medicate with every kind of comforting habit and addiction attempt to deceive us with alcohol, drugs, sex, porn, movies, dark movies, 
television, websites, apps, video games, internet activities. Lucifer wants us to live our whole lives trying to bandage our own wounds. He wants us to wrap all of our broken places with band-aids of fear, addiction, insecurity, suspicions, paranoia, isolation, eating disorders, whether it be gluttony or starvation, all kinds of personality dysfunctions. And to overcome the spirit of Lucifer, we must train ourselves to always put God first and above everyone else and everything else in our lives. This is a choice by choice by choice by choice to make one choice to make every choice for Jesus Christ. We do prayer ministry here and I am amazed at how often this spirit that identifies as Lucifer presents itself in prayer ministry. And what's shocking about that, that spirit when it identifies is generally that it um, shows up in the most tidy and nice people we think if somebody's um, having a raging life of sin and Lucifer self-identifies, that would make sense to us. But instead, it would be a proper person who's experiencing some kind of torment or just ask for prayer ministry. And then we see this. It's amazing how he stays hidden in people that are very religious, tidy, neat, professional people. Jealousy is operating in your life if you're unable to give others honor or if when someone else receives recognition or honor, you're thinking about yourself. What about me? Why did they get that and I didn't? You don't know the circumstances around the person or why this was presented, why God allowed this. You simply immediately move into judgment, comparison, and lack of appreciation for that other person. Bitterness then sets the stage for envy takes our eyes off God, puts our eyes on others, and makes sure makes others the source of supply for whatever our feelings are. The, we validate our feelings through a wrong focus. Jealousy comes as an emotional wound because we have not been preferred. The spirit of jealousy says they don't care about you. If they cared about me, they would have recognized me. One of the main things that you need to understand about the spirit of jealousy is that it travels with other spirits. These spirits show up afterwards if we allow jealousy to continue unchecked within us or around us. If you have a spirit of jealousy, here are the other spirits that will follow in the door behind it and how they will manifest in your life. Murder. Literally wanting to get rid of the person so that you can get what they have. Evil thoughts that something bad will happen to this person. That's a spirit of murder. Strife. Constant tension between you and that person and everyone else around. Greed and lust. Insatiable desire to have what the other person has, even though if you were to stop and think about it, you have more than they do. Envy. You want what others have without any legal, biblical, or covenantal claim to it. Destruction. Constantly speaking evil of the focus of your jealousy, hoping secretly that what they have comes to nothing. If you can't get it when they shouldn't, if you can't get it, they shouldn't have it either. Competition, trying to compete to show them and others that you are better and deserve what they have. Selfish ambition, doing things not out of love for God and others, but to get attention so that everyone looks at you and not the person that you're jealous of. Anger, this spirit is usually hidden and comes out in the form of an outburst against the focus of your jealousy. Division. You start to form teams of people around you who will agree and justify your feelings so that you can all gang up against this person. Slander. Speaking half-truths or complete lies in an attempt to discredit the person or to damage their character. Striving. Working like crazy out of the flesh instead of out of the anointing. This will mean that you have to work twice as hard to do what they're doing and oftentimes with very little effect. Jealousy will work hard to steal your self-worth. However, our worth actually comes from God. Therefore, it's already a wrong focus. The spirit of jealousy will rise up within us when a wound is present and we're looking for our worth in other places rather than in the Lord. The spirit of jealousy is not from a fiery dart of the enemy or a betrayal. It's like a puncture wound and it takes a long time to heal. 
A cut heals quickly, but a puncture wound takes much longer. It seeks to bind us up emotionally and make us ineffective for the Lord. We have to get our eyes off of others and onto God. Do not entertain thoughts of comparison with anyone for any reason. God has great plans for each one of his children, according to Jeremiah 29, 11. We say, if I were perfect, then I would be accepted. So we're driven into perfection and performance. This is rooted in self-idolatry, which is looking at self and others, leading to many other crippling spiritual issues. I had someone write to me and ask me today um, how I perceived her when I first met her probably five or six years ago. And I said, honestly, I don't read notes because I want to assess people for myself. I don't wanna filter through someone else's assessment. So I just like to watch people myself. And I said, it took me months because you were so perfect. Your appearance, your conversations, your moods, you were so heavily controlled. I could not figure out who you were because I knew that behind all that were things that you could not face, but I could not see it. Took her coloring her hair and having a bunch of it break off and having to wear a scarf on her head for me to be able to start to see any kind of humanity in her that might be normal. Satan is being used in our lives at this point. The enemy hates for us to give honor, glory, and praise to anything, especially to God. He wants us to be like him and want all the honor, all the glory to come to ourselves. God has delegated his authority to man on earth and the enemy is jealous over man. Lucifer is jealous also because he was given one opportunity to get it right and once he sinned, there was no hope for him. God has given us the opportunity to fail and redeem us over and over again and Satan hates that. We as believers must acknowledge the truth for ourselves and repent to be free from the captivity of this focus, which is the same as the devil. It's aligning with him. Otherwise, we face eternity in hell with him. When an uneasy feeling of jealousy arises within you, do not take it lightly. It is one of the most serious places you can be because of the spirit of Lucifer who's waiting at the door. Immediately start to worship, honor, and give glory to God. People that are insecure in their position are wide open for jealousy to come in. If you harbor bitter envy and selfish ambition in your hearts, that is a huge it's a huge signal that it's already there. Selfish ambition is what I was referring to earlier in the ministry. When you see selfish ambition, and you know that it's selfish ambition because it's comparing a lot. It uses data from other ministries or other places. It, it's always working against other information that's not coming from the Bible. And it's mean. It's mean. There's just a lot of mean behavior that's associated with it. When an envious and jealous spirit operates where we have fear due to insecurity in our lives that we're going to be displaced, whether it's real or imagined, it operates the same way. Might not even be true, but we're going to act it out as if it is. That fear opens the door to a judgmental and critical spirit. We've all seen that. And when that spirit has locked onto our heart, we begin to judge the situation and the other person which then brings the suspicion and the vain imaginations. Next, we begin to guard our lives, which brings separation, creates tension and distrust, because now we're sorting out our daily routine around this problem that we imagine is going on. And then we start to move into rage, bitterness, that unforgiveness is now operating in our lives, which will harden our heart. And now that unforgiveness has entered into our lives, we will try to manipulate the situation and people, which opens the door to witchcraft and occult spirits. And at this point, the spirit of death has legal ground to our lives. And we cannot resist this spirit of death. Luke 4.18 says you have to be delivered of that spirit. And we see the spirit of death at work in more people than not that come to us for prayer, that spirit has gotten in the door. And that makes for a real mess in someone's life. 
Saul and David are a clear example in 1 Samuel 16, 6 through 9, where it says, And it came to pass, as they came when David was returned from the slaughter of the Philistines, that the women came out from all the cities of Israel, singing and dancing to meet King Saul, with joy and with instruments of music. And the women answered one another as they played and said, Saul has slain his thousands and David his ten thousands. And Saul was very wrought. And the saying displeased him, and he said, They have ascribed unto David ten thousands, and to me they have ascribed but thousands. And what can, and what can he have more but the kingdom? It says, Then Saul eyed David from that day forward. Eyed in Hebrew means to watch with jealousy. And because David received more praise than Saul, it opened a door to jealousy in Saul towards David. Their assignments in the kingdom were different, but Saul couldn't see that and allowed anger and wrath to enter into himself. David had to flee because Saul wanted to murder him. And because of his insecurity, Saul wasn't even thankful for the vast amount that he had slain in battle, but he looked at the more that David had slain. And in the comparison, he opened that door to jealousy. He was unable to rejoice for David. And you see how jealousy and death walk together because immediately he wanted to kill him. It's a serious, deadly spirit that looks at a way to eliminate and kill the person as a solution to your problem. Jealousy easily leads to murder and our prisons are full of the proof of that. What happens when we allow jealousy to lead to rage is we have taken the situation into our own hands and out of God's hands and vengeance brings murder on the person. Stay away from people that are prone to this. Many times that is such a sudden act. It is so fast that of course the person would not do it if they would look back, but this jealousy had settled in so hard and had all these other spirits already in the door with it that it had overcome the person and then they're sitting in jail, I've met many of them, and they're just dumbfounded because now they've had a few days to sit there and watch their life, which they know they're not gonna have their freedom for a long time. And the person that they probably beat up really bad that they're now in jail over is with the person that they were fighting for in the first place. They just handed them right over. Hindsight at that point is futile because the consequences are going to be so great. We can also become jealous of the sovereignty of God. God can do whatever he wants, however, and whenever he wants. And we become jealous when God respects someone over us as we see it. He is no respecter of persons, but we must understand this kind of thing when an, a person who is in our own mind a very wicked sinful person when they're suddenly saved filled with the holy spirit rise up in ministry and become this frontline voice for the kingdom it's very hard on traditional ministers to see that many times or anyone else it's like how did they get there all of a sudden we've worked so hard for that many are called but few are chosen to be god does not prefer them over us the spirit of jealousy will rise up if we do not understand the sovereign character of God because he will do what he wants when he wants. Lust looks into other people's business and ministry and life, trying to find information to be used for future control to feed that root of bitterness leading to anger, wrath, and rage. How many people troll social media looking for things to screenshot and send to someone else just to ruin relationships? Proverbs 27, 4, wrath is cruel and anger is a torrent, but who is able to stand before jealousy? We must be released from judgments against God through a breaking and repentance and turning to the Lord. God has to be able to trust us and he desires the purity of our relationship with him. That does not allow for jealousy. That is a work that is done in prayer and we have fought so hard to get this ministry turned to prayer. We, it started out before it was even formed as a call to prayer. And then all these other things just keep coming in that we end up loving and accepting and doing, and it drowns out the prayer. And now again, we've cleared the table 
to bring it back to prayer because so many people are trapped for one in jealousy jealousy has so many people bound we are very eager to help people to unravel these systems of spirits that have set up in them, exalted themselves above God in their lives and rendered them powerless in the kingdom. They cannot feel God. They cannot hear God. They just feel like this is all just uh, a list of things I do every day. They are not having any kind of an experiential walk with God at all. I don't even know how people do it. I don't know how they do it. We really want to help with that because if your walk with God has no experience, I don't know how you do it. I don't know why you do it. The worst result is jealousy will lead us to turn away from our true devotion to God. That is the worst thing that can happen and that is why that sin is filling hell. Deuteronomy 32, 16 says, They provoked him to jealousy with foreign gods. With abominations, they provoked him to anger. God. They provoked God to anger because he gave us life. He gave us everything. And yet people want to serve something else, anything else. The TV, they want to serve that instead of God. 1 King 14.22, Now Judah did evil in the sight of the Lord, and they provoked him to jealousy with their sins, and they all built them high places and images, went to a lot of work to build idols to worship. To emulate is to imitate. Emulations, as used in some older translations of the Bible, is a pretty obsolete word that means jealous competition or ambition driven by envy. Sinful emulation is greed-driven desire to emulate someone's success or share in their wealth. It is a keeping up with the Joneses type mentality that's immersed in coveting. We see this all over in our society. We see the, the change of dress sweep across television preachers. You see one go from a reverent suit. I don't have a clarity on what they need to wear, but one starts wearing this certain type of clothes and pretty soon that drift goes all the way across and pretty soon you, then you see something swing all the way back. You just see these trends that come from the comparison and the desire to be like, to emulate another because people like that. When we desire to emulate the wicked or harbor jealousy towards others because of the impact they're having or the attention they're receiving, we cannot live in love and humility as God commands. Sinful emulations will not accomplish God's purpose in our lives. The feelings of the heart are both godly and wicked. Some emotions spur people together in brotherly love, compassion, and worship, but others root individuals in stubbornness, disdain, and pride. And it changes the way people perceive others, their own life, and often how they see God, his goodness, and his plan. For us to be set free, we must repent. We have got to break these judgments in our hearts. We have to forgive and we have to bless. So the people that you're jealous of, the only way to break this is to forgive them and speak blessing, repeatedly speak blessing over these people over the situation otherwise you are tethered to the devil allow the love of god to come in and heal the deep wound and release all the pain that jesus took to the cross already so you could be healed jealousy will bind you from operating in your anointing and gifting it will keep you from being used it will block you from god you must be willing to be healed we are to love as God loves. It doesn't matter what the person has done. We are commanded as followers of Christ to love. Psalms 84, 11 says, For the Lord God is a sun and a shield. The Lord will give grace and glory. No good thing will he withhold from them that walk uprightly. 1 Corinthians 13, 4 states, Love does not envy. If we are envious of our brothers and sisters in Christ, then we do not love them. The love of Christ is void of selfish ambition and desire. Christians are called to dispense with envy. Therefore, rid yourselves of all malice, all deceit, hypocrisy, envy, and slander of every kind. And how do we accomplish this? Believers in Jesus Christ have died to sin 
and been made alive to the Spirit of God. In a real sense, the struggle between the sin nature and the Spirit continues, but Christians, real Christ followers, have power through the Holy Spirit to strengthen them and to win that fight. Being jealous indicates that we're not satisfied with what God has given us, and the Bible tells us to be content with what we have, for God will never fail us or forsake us. Most of us have lived long enough to know that if we would have gotten what we wanted, we would have been destroyed by it. Over and over and over. The only chance we have at going to heaven is to not get everything that we think we need. In order to combat jealousy, we need to become more like Jesus and less like ourselves. We can get to know him through Bible study, prayer, and fellowship, and we must be with other believers. As we learn how to serve others instead of ourselves, our hearts are going to change. Do not conform any longer to the pattern of this world, but be transformed by the renewing of your mind. Then you will be able to test and approve what God's will is, his good, pleasing, and perfect will, Romans 12:2. The root of envy is a dissatisfied heart. We experience envy when we can't have what we want. And we have learned from Philippians 4.10, the secret of contentment is delighting ourselves in the Lord. Chris Val Valatan writes, The Apostle James wrote, For where there is envying and strife, there is confusion in every evil work. Jealousy wears many masks. Sometimes it calls itself discernment as it searches the heart of its victim, looking for reasons to discredit them. But the gift of discernment anointed by the spirit of jealousy is called suspicion. Suspicion is discernment's wicked stepsister. Jealousy is pure evil. It opens the door to demonic spirits in our life like no other sin can. Jealousy is often inspired by someone getting more attention or being more popular than we are. King Saul's jealousy opened the door to a spirit of insanity and murder in his life. It transformed a once humble farm boy into a mass murderer. Although jealousy has many faces, it has no friends. A person like you, a person can like you and promote you one day and then view you as a threat the next. As long as they feel more popular, more talented, and more powerful than you, they will promote you. But the second that your notoriety, favor, and talent or power surpasses their own, a war begins. Jealousy leads us to try and reduce that person, highlight their weaknesses, build structures to control them, develop a case against them, and or incite a crowd to persecute them. Jealousy can build a beautiful palace, but a destroyer is lurking in the basement just waiting for the opportunity to mastermind some ploy to bring down its victim. There are consequences for God, from God for harboring a jealous spirit. You put yourself under a curse for one, God puts you away from him and you forfeit your blessing until you repent for two. Three, you will pass that murderous, jealous spirit onto your children. Jealousy begets jealousy, Genesis 4.24. And what's even more frightening, based on the story of Cain, is his descendant, Lamech, turned out to be even more cruel than he was. And the bottom line is, there's absolutely no blessing that's going to come your way when you have a spirit of jealousy operating in you. There are four steps to overcoming jealousy. First, we must admit that we are jealous and stop justifying our sin. If it looks like a duck, quacks like a duck, walks like a duck, it's a duck. Telling people how much you love and admire the person you resent is lies and masking your sin, which only allows that monster to grow even more you are feeding it even more. Two, if we're jealous of someone, we need to invest in them. Then their victory will be our victory, kingdom-minded. Three, refuse to embrace it. War against that spirit. Don't give your mind permission to compare yourself with them. Cultivate a truly thankful heart for them. Four, we must remember that our Father has plenty of love, provision, fame, and plenty of everything else for all of his children. When someone gets what we long for, there is still plenty left. One person's promotion is not another person's demotion. But if we can't celebrate the victories of others, the Lord is not going to let us have our own. And on the other hand, if we humble ourselves, he will exalt us in proper time. Father God, now 
that we know how dangerous this spirit is, we repent of it. We ask you to remove this from us along with all other spirits that travel with it. Let us never be lumped in with Cain or Joseph's brothers because nothing good came from their lives. You will never bless us for this behavior, so remove this spirit from our midst. Let us never be comfortable feeling this way. Give us a heart that rejoices when others are blessed and mourns when others are suffering instead of glorying in it. God, wash and cleanse our minds, our hearts, our spirits, and purify us from this unrighteousness. Move us from under the curse and put us in place to receive your blessing. Remove any generational curses that may have been passed down to us from our forefathers. Cut off this spirit from being passed down to our children. Forgive us for not appreciating all the blessings that we currently have. Help us to be content with what you have given us today, knowing that even more blessings are on the way for us. And we trust that today we are free from this, and we will look for the blessing of your Holy Spirit to fulfill all of our needs and desires. In Jesus' name, amen.